Hey, how's it going? Hey, not bad. And yourself? Oh, all good, all good. So, um, let me begin. So, uh, tell me a little something about yourself. Uh, I'm Blaine Smith. Uh, I'm a reviewer at Banger Films, um, and I uh, yeah, also do some Twitch streaming of uh, video games and metal music. Awesome. So, uh, what basically got you started into actually liking metal, to actually want to do stuff of metal? Um, I, I mean, I guess it's, it was just kind of, you know, uh, when you're growing up, you kind of listen to a little bit of all types of music. You know, you're still trying to figure out what fits, and uh, eventually, I re- once I was in my 20s, I realized metal was all I was still listening to. Um, you know, it was... When I was when I was younger, I had I, I listened to a lot of punk as well, some hardcore, uh, some just regular rock music. And then as I got older, I kind of stopped caring about all that stuff, and only really metal was what I really liked listening to. Awesome. All right. Uh, what was the first metal band that basically you got into that actually started all of it for you? Well, the like the very first metal band I got into was uh, was Judas Priest, just because you know that's Judas Priest is kind of that band that got a lot of people first into metal i think because you know there's they they have that broad appeal where they work even for people that aren't uh fans of uh metal they still will love a judas priest song if it comes on the bar um and it was like a i can picture like three kind of distinct phases it was when i was young really young i got into judas priest and then like a lot of people then went to metallica to get a little heavier and then a totally uh random band when i was in high school there was a canadian band called electro quarter staff that played this like really crazy technical death metal uh try harmonized guitars at first they had three good three guitar players and no bass player and i heard that in high school and i was like wow this is so ridiculous and over the top and crazy and that was like a thing where i was like man i wonder how deep i can go with metal and that's really kind of where i started getting into the weirder smaller subgenres and everything Awesome. What would you say is actually your favorite genre of metal of, of, of all time that you really like the most? That uh, first like started? I said, I, I, I got, I, you know, I got really into the smaller and smaller genres. So the thing I love the most is death doom, you know, the combination of doom and, and, and death metal really, my favorite band is hooded menace. It's, it's my favorite genre. And that's actually how I talk as a talking as an expert about the genre is how I got involved working with banger films. Nice. How is it actually working for Banger Films? I've been actually watching a lot of those videos for like so many years and I became such a huge fan of the channel. Well, I mean, it's a really great company to work for, you know. I mean, the way it started was just a a guy wanted to make a film about loving metal, right? And uh, the, the... company really has that kind of vibe you know it's gotten bigger they've made documentaries about other types of music and other genres but they still want to keep the the youtube channel so they have a little bit of metal at the core of the company at all times and it's really just a a job where your passion is what determines everything they you know they if you really are excited about a record that's coming out i just need to go to my producer and say hey man this record's coming out i really love it i'd love to review it and if he can make it work he's like yeah let's do it you know um they they don't make me say anything they don't say like oh let's check over your reviews they just want you know it's totally we want your honest opinion we want your honest reaction we want what you think, what you feel, and it's just cool to have a company that really, like, the only thing they proofread is to make sure you didn't make, like, an error with a year or something. That's the only oversight you get other than that. It's just like, hey, man, you know, yeah, you're the expert. Let's hear you. Awesome. Has there ever been actually an episode of of when you review an album that was actually unscripted and it was just you just talking about what you think of the album or it never has been? Um, I mean, they're all kind of unscripted to an extent in the sense that like I write a, a, a an outline and then I just kind of loosely follow it. Um, you know, sometimes I'll be talking and I'll realize something sounds a little weird out loud or sometimes we'll just be improving something in the studio. It's really a nice, super casual environment where it's just, uh, you know, a couple of people that really like metal making a video together so you know those times especially when it's me and someone else talking about the when we do the like duos the tag teams you know at some point you can kind of plan your own thing but we don't know what the other person's gonna say so we get to riff off each other and that's a lot of fun <laughs> nice what would you say is like one of your favorite moments on working in the studio actually at the banger hanger 
Uh, it's it, there's been this kind of funny thing that's happened where almost every time I make a video with someone, it's always like this nice experience where you know uh, it feels uh, very like fun and 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 uh, and like a family kind of thing. And both uh, I've, I've I've made videos with Sam and uh, Brad, and both times I've made videos with them, I've come up with like a nickname for them on the spot that then has like carried forward and other <laughs> like people start. With Sam, I called him Papa Dunn one time, and people really like that. And with uh, Brad, I call him Braddy Z, and people do that in the comments and stuff. So it's nice to see, like, you know, you have this kind of genuine moment of friendship, and then it carries forward, and it's it's nice. That's so awesome, actually. <laughs> also, um, when it comes to like actually like um, like I always see like um, I remember back then watching those um, live streams of Lockhorns. Actually, how does that mostly go down? Because it looks so interesting how the production is to like getting it all together and set. How how's that process back then when it, when it was still going on? Yeah, when it was when it was live, it was really cool. But it was part of the reason it's not live anymore is just because the amount of people that were. It was like we were just doing this little YouTube show. We were talking about extremely obscure metal genres and getting really, you know, into like arguing about completely pointless things. And there was like eight people in the room. You know, there's like the person, Sam, the person who's talking with the expert, Lisa, uh, Daniel filming it, uh, <laughs> that guy doing audio. And it was like, holy crap, there's a lot of people in this video. Um, but that was, like I said, that's how it, it was a cool thing because that's how I started. You know, they would, that's how they kind of bring people in. And that's, I went in just to talk because one of them had seen me do stand up and we're like, oh, Lisa saw me do stand up. And I was like, oh, you're a stand up and you like metal. Do you want to come on and talk about something? And I was like, oh, totally. And so it was, it, it was such a cool, unique environment. And again, it was one of those things where they didn't ask you for a script in advance. They didn't tell it, say, like, okay, what are you going to talk about? And here's, it was kind of like, yeah, you and Sam are going to go in and talk to each other, like honestly, and just, you know, kind of have your enthusiasm, excitement about a genre. You know, if Sam knows a lot about it, he's going to talk a lot. If it's something newer to him, you're going to kind of teach him at the same time. And it was really cool. Awesome. So um, what would you say is actually your favorite genre that you actually worked on during like the uh, Lockhorn session? Like I said, with I, you know, getting to do the Death Doom was like super cool because it was you know it's my favorite genre. And it was funny to be like the amount of people that I thought were going to be like, oh yeah, this, this, and this, and then the amount of people in the chat were like, what the hell is Death Doom? <laughs> it was like it was like a nice moment to come into and be like, okay, so I am an expert in this. I do know a lot more than the average person. That's good to know. Awesome. <laughs> Because uh, also, what would you say is one of your favorite guests that you had on uh, one of the Lockhorns? Um, so I, I, I didn't host any of the Lockhorns, but uh, um, one of the things we did that was cool was uh, we had like a little podcast for a while because we've just we're just always like, okay, we got some time to kill. Let's make twelve episodes of a podcast. You know, we just have this great studio space, and uh, and people are willing to talk to us. Um, and we got to do some uh, some really cool ones, but uh, uh, there was. Um, uh, the the one that really stands out to me is uh, uh, Jeff Becerra from Possessed, uh, you know, one of the forefathers of the genre of death metal. You know, we kind of wound up with a, a friendship over the years, and he came on the, the podcast, and we just told crazy stories about, you know, the, the, the start of death metal and crazy experiences and, and, and all these kind of wild, you know, rock and roll, the kind of rock and roll stories you want, and it was a, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Oh, by the way, I actually, I really love the shirt you're wearing. Actually, I'm a big fan of that band. Oh yeah, right. This was my, uh, this was my um, uh, album of the year last year, and it was, it's cool. It again, one of the nicest things about Banger is that I can pick, you know, uh, an obscure, atmospheric black metal band out of, <laughs> out of a small label in Canada as my album of the year, and they're like, hey, this is. The, the album that he's saying is the best that came out this year and they don't go like, eh, can you pick something bigger so we can get some web traffic or anything like that? It's like, and, and you know, I've been in contact with the Hypnotic Dirt, the label, uh, a fair amount since then because they're like, hey, the promotion really did a lot for us. We really appreciate it. They just sent me this t-shirt a couple of days ago and I was like, oh, sweet, I already have the hoodie. So, <laughs> yeah, I'd love a t-shirt. Awesome. Uh, actually, I will actually want to ask you this question too. Um, actually, I want to ask you like, um, 
out of all the genres that actually Banger had had basically went through actually during the Lock Horton section, uh, has there ever been like a genre that they actually wanted to do but they never actually got to it? Yeah, we, we, you know, it was kind of a thing where we were trying to figure out if we'd be able to do it forever. Uh, there's there's a lot of kind of more niche black metal genres where you can kind of really get into it. You know, something uh, uh, like, uh, you know, some more atmospheric black metal or suicidal depressive black metal or war metal. All the kind of little small where it was like it, it wasn't number one on the priority list to be like, OK, let's talk about this black metal genre with like 12 bands in it. But those with black metal there's so many weird little offshoots that we would have loved to have done awesome like um i'm actually i'm a very huge fan of like um the old black metal actually not not like like not just like the 90s uh black metal with in norway i mean like um some other like black metal bands that are more like um like raw have you ever wanted to do like a, a raw black metal actually debate show like on just yeah i mean I'd, I'd i'd love to do that that's one of the one of the things i really got into for a while was there was this kind of weird period in the 2000s where that website media fire was like you could just download the, the, there was just copyright infringement <laughs> left and right but there was all these blog spots that would just share media fire links and they would all be like super specialized like just super raw black metal and i used to go through those uh, for hours and find all these strange weird little bands so i could i could go down a total rabbit hole about all kinds of weird you know black metal that groups that only released a, a tape terribly recorded in a basement <laughs> um I, also i i've i'm actually been like a really huge fan of also the, that other new series that um banger was doing like shredders of metal uh how, yep. how is that actually how that all go from like the first one to the second like what was the how was the experience of actually having to like do all that and basically get it everything all together it i mean they, they we just actually um uh are, are editing wrapping up the, the third season which uh we're doing with drummers so that's that's that was really exciting too um it's been really cool because <laughs> it it was we we planned it and then we we're like okay we think this is how it's gonna go but it's kind of one of those things where it's also dependent on the guitar players and you're not having like rehearsals and stuff. So it was like, it's a little bit of chaos. We film it all in a, a, a weekend. So it's like really fast paced. And then it's kind of crazy for me because as the host, I'm just sort of like the glue keeping everything together and moving. And uh, they're always like, by the end, we're all just like totally exhausted, but it's such a fun time and every, and Again, it's just that fun vibe at Banger where everybody's so passionate and everybody wants to be there and have fun and everything that, you know, people come in, even, you know, you bring in these guitar players or in this case, the drummers, and they immediately pick up on the vibe where it's like, oh, yeah, this is like a fun place. You know, they, they relax pretty quickly. They, they, they're they able to perform to kind of their best and just have a good time. And it, it's such a it's such a nice little special experience especially the drummer one because you know guitar players are a little used to you know kind of the spotlight and having opportunities and stuff but with the drummers it was like they're when do drummers get the spotlight <laughs> you know so it was like a it was definitely there was like a different vibe with the drummer one that was it was really special that i'm excited to see kind of uh people's reaction to that Awesome. I'm actually looking forward to that, actually. When they made the announcement for it, I was wondering how that was going to go, actually. It was very loud. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, sorry. Well, actually, I want to ask you this. Uh, how is it actually working with uh, Sam Dunn? Uh, Sam's great. I mean, he's uh, it, one of the one of the one of the things that I think is just the best example of his character is uh, so he's six foot four. He's giant. Um, and when we go to concerts, like, you know, he, he literally is sticks out of, from the crowd and, you know, most people at a metal show know who, know who he is and he will get people through the whole, he's just there to watch a band. He just wants to, you know, go and see a band he likes and like a hundred people over the course of the night will ask him, Hey, can I get a picture? Hey, can I get a picture? And from one to number 100 he is like yeah man totally and he's like talks with them and is like super enthusiastic and like genuine and kind and like you know they they walk away and he's never like oh that guy he's just like that was nice you know he's just he's just a nice guy who's like 
who knows he's a metal nerd and then so when even the biggest like kind of most ob- obnoxious metal nerd comes up to him he's like well i'm that to somebody so i don't ever want anyone to make me feel bad about that so i'm never gonna make anyone feel bad about that and you know that's what it's like working with him awesome actually if it wasn't for him actually he really inspired me to actually want to really do a lot of like metal, metal interviews and actually start making my own type of channel so i i give him a lot of credit for what he's done for me well, I think that's kind of the the thing that you hear a lot of people is something about the way Sam did it makes people think they can do it too, which is a really nice thing. You know, you can see some things where it's like, you know, this big production and, and you can go, wow, that's so cool to see. And you never consider like, I could do that. But something about the way Sam does it, it's still big and professional and, you know, gets seen around the world. But something about it sparks this thing in you where you go like, huh. I wonder, why couldn't I do that? <laughs> awesome. Uh, also, like, um, I, I want to ask you this. Uh, what, have you, what have you been jamming lately? Any new tunes? Um, so there's been there's been a couple of cool things. Um, uh, actually, I just finished yesterday filming a review for the new Paradise Lost record, um, speaking of Death Doom, and... Uh, I guess this is going to go up after the review, I'm sure. So I can say that, like, it's amazing. It's super great. Uh, I've, I've really been loving the record. Um, and then uh, I've been listening to um, my friends in Bellwitch are putting out a new record in June. Um, so that's a kind of that's on the horizon that I'm really excited about. And then uh, from a couple of Metal Monthlies ago, my, my show, um, there was this band, Mallow Carpetan, that um out of uh slovakia and it's this weird folky blackened heavy metally kind of very unique thing that still i i just absolutely love listening to awesome um actually i do want to tell you about this one band i don't know if you ever heard this band but this might actually catch your interest um are you um really into the old school death metal actually like really into it or not that yeah old? yeah totally all right actually have you heard of this band called regurgitation uh, regurgitation, yeah, I believe so. Do they have a new album coming out? Oh, uh, actually, they they're like an old like school death yeah. metal band, but they're, they're not really like it's not like a new album. But uh, Hell's Headbangers recently reissued, and they got reissued it, but like put it out now on their website. And oh, cool. I just and it's brand new. Like they made like a DVD with like live footage and some. Oh, cool! And there's one interview with the band, and it's it's like all band. Like and they're old, like nine, like, somewhere in there, I think like 1995 actually album. So I would highly suggest actually you checking that out. And and if oh, I, I will. And if anyone else actually doesn't know about that, you should tell them. It's it's really coming out pretty strong. Cool. Uh, actually, and also now I want to ask you this. Like I also hear that you do comedy, right? Yeah. Uh, how is it actually? Like, how is it actually like being a comedian as well as long as as well as also doing stuff about metal? Uh, there's like a there's like a lot of I, I feel it's like a similar there's there's a similar feeling because you know as metal fans we always feel like kind of metal is like this kind of more underground thing that's not like fully appreciated and uh, it's it's kind of similar being a comedian where you feel like you know you can think of these massive comedians but on average like. The, uh, the 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 kind of comedy in your city and stuff. Not a lot of uh, there's a lot of people that you'll talk to that'll be like, oh, I've never seen a live stand up comedy show. And you know, you'll be like, well, you know who Jerry Seinfeld is, and they're like, yeah. And it's like, we've well, watched his stand up special on Netflix. Yeah. Well, why haven't you gone to see a live stand up comedy night? Oh, I just don't know how. <laughs> stuff like that. So it feels kind of a similar thing where you're kind of doing this thing that's like a little a little weirder, kind of a little more off the beaten path, you know, uh, and there's, uh, there's just kind of a similarity to being a comedian and being a metalhead where you kind of always feel like an outsider and you kind of look at things a little differently and it kind of not, it's a thing you do, but unlike a lot of other things, it really kind of affects your whole life where, you know, when you're a comedian, most of your friends are comedians and you can't have a normal conversation amongst comedians where it's just always has to be jokes 100% of the time. And, you know, it, and, it, and it just feels like a similar energy to metalheads where we, we all are have our bullshit detectors on high. You know, someone shows up with a new haircut and you just spend the rest of the night making fun of them, whether the haircut looks good or not. And I just feel like it, with metalheads, it's the exact same thing, you know, like someone someone wears a shirt for a band that you think is dumb and then you're just making fun of them for the whole night. <laughs> 
<laughs> that is that I love how that, that is fantastic. <laughs> um, actually, what inspired you to actually do comedy? Actually, what what got you wanting to actually be a stand up comedian? Um, it was a very random thing. I was uh, I was teaching English in a French high school um, in in Paris, and uh, I kind of eventually like stopped really wanting to teach the class and mostly just wanted to like entertain the, the, the kids in the class, just make them laugh. Every time I was like making them laugh, I was like having the most fun. And, uh, and one day we were like, I, I, an activity I had prepared for them where we were doing like a unit on like jobs, you know, I was like, Oh, what would your dream job be? And so then we went through and they were like, Oh, sir, what would your dream job be? And I was like, ah, I don't know. Actually, I guess like maybe like a comedian now. And they're like, Oh, you're funny. You should try that. And I was like, Oh, Maybe I should, and then I did, and it's been, you know, I just never stopped. Awesome. Also, like, I do see a lot of your reviews. I love how you put, like, the comedy in, in the review as well, which makes it really a, and a lot more entertaining also to watch. Right. I mean, that's kind of – I feel like every – there's – no one right way to review things. Um, everybody kind of needs a different thing out of their reviews. And for me, it's just the idea of a video review. It's like, well, it would be faster to read a review, right? We can, you know, it, the videos are like 10 minutes long. I could read a review in like three minutes. So why am I watching a video over reading a review? And it's like, well, something has to be gotten from the person presenting it like this. And for me, I'm like, well, it's comedy's better when it's delivered instead of written down so i should be bringing as much comedy to it as i can and you know some people are like you should be taking reviewing seriously and i'm like that's cool man there's people that do serious reviews you can go do their stuff and i'm happy they exist but i could not watch a serious review i can't watch 10 minutes of someone being serious about something i'm like i need something i i get uncomfortable there's a tension i'm like oh i can't believe this person's been being serious for 10 minutes that seems impossible uh so you know that's that's just been my thing where i'm like what you know what's added by having this video medium and for me it's like i can do gags i can do jokes i could have stupid props you know anything i can really bring in to get a get a chuckle out of people awesome and you really actually have for me like that's why when i know that you're doing review i'm like yes it's blaine smith <laughs> yeah it's funny when people like talk about like jokes i've had in like past reviews and stuff too it's like oh man that's so nice that's like you know just uh, everything i could possibly hope for is that people enjoy the jokes you know it's it's uh it's been weird in quarantine because i have to record at home alone and it's so much harder for me because in the studio there's only a couple of us but there's still a couple of people that i can make laugh and a lot of times we have to do like another take when i make a joke because they don't know the joke's coming because like I said, the scripts are very loose. I'm not like letting them know a joke's coming and sometimes I'm improving them. So I'll get a laugh in the studio and I'll be like, as the performer, as the comedian, I'm like, oh good. Doing it at home to nobody, it's like I'll put the camera there and there's nobody behind it. I, like I'm just, it's so much less fun. And I, like, have to, it takes me like an hour to do a 10 minute review. Whereas in the studio, it's like 20 minutes and I'm in and out and I'm like, damn it. Getting frustrated, flubbing lines. Cause it's like, there's no one to make laughs. So. Also, uh, throughout the quarantine, actually, have you been in contact with everyone actually in the in the bang? Oh yeah, yeah. We, uh, you know, we 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 all. One kind of cute thing again. The company is just such a nice company to work for. It's just weird when you, it, after all the places I've worked, having a place where working at somewhere where uh, you hang out and li like the people you work with. It's, they're not just people you work with. Um, we have a company-wide thing on Fridays at 5 p.m. over Zoom. We have like a happy hour at the end of the week where everybody just kind of catches up on what they've been doing and we're all on video. And we there's there's been like themes for them where you like wear a silly hat or something. And it seems cheesy, but it's like just everybody wants to do it because, you know, we're used to seeing each other every day and like seeing each other every day and do miss seeing each other. Awesome. I'm actually very glad to actually hear because – I always like to know how other people are also doing as well. During oh, yeah. Like, and mean, then, you know, uh, like, you know, also just like texting. Like, we, you know, DK and I text like like every day pretty much. <laughs> we hang out all the time. Awesome. Also, like, um, actually, as if I also do reviews myself on my YouTube channel. Like, uh, what are some other, like, tips that you can give uh, for, like, reviewing, actually, as well? Because I also want to make my reviews a lot more exciting, too, for, for those who are watching. Well, the, the, like 
I said, I don't think there's any real like wrong way to review. I think the kind of thing that everybody should figure out is like what their reviews, like how, how their reviews take advantage of whatever like their best asset is. So, you know, some guys are, you know, really technical and know a lot, have a technical review, but you know, if I'm not a super technical guy, I don't, I don't, play guitar so i don't know a lot of guitar terminology and for me i'm like well if i was watching a review i wouldn't know that guitar terminology either so i try and always just convey things the way i would understand them because i'm like okay well i'll try and convey them in a funny way and i'll try and use my words you know instead of saying something like tremolo picking you know i know enough like uh i i I intentionally play down how much i know as like a bit uh, but, you know, instead of saying tremolo picking, because some people don't know what tremolo picking is, I say, like, when I'm talking about black metal parts with tremolo picking, I go, the we didn't need any parts. <laughs> and I think it's like a funny way to convey something where if you know what tremolo picking is, you still know what I'm talking about. You're like, why is he saying we need parts instead of tremolo picking? This guy's an idiot. But you know what I'm talking about. But if you don't know what tremolo picking is, you go, oh, I know the sound he's talking about. So, yeah, my advice for people is always just, like, figure out what your – your specialty is what you're best at what you bring to the table and then focus on that awesome Um, thank you very much for that i actually appreciate the advice i can always want to learn how to do better in my reviews in the future yeah i mean right we're all we're all constantly learning and you know sometimes you get feedback where you're like oh that's a good point and then sometimes you get feedback where you're like oh that's just a jerk (laughs) so you know you got to figure out how to how to how to how to filter the the good from the bad but yeah man just you know and especially just passion, just like being wanting to do it is like a thing that I think comes across a lot where, you know, there's there's a couple of reviews where it wasn't that I didn't like the band or that I it's just, you know, something was going on in my life or or something where I just wasn't as excited about reviewing. And you see like you watch the review afterwards and you go like, oh, no one's going to be like, oh, this guy phoned it in or something. But those reviews don't stand out in people's mind and they kind of are just the ones that like fade away. And you're like, oh, that makes sense. That was one that I didn't really put my heart into. Ah, awesome. All right. Um, uh, one of the things I was going actually, I also didn't want to actually ask you this. Um, are there any upcoming albums that you're looking forward to actually that, that, that are coming soon that you're really looking forward to? Uh, like I said, the, uh, the upcoming, uh, uh, Bell Witch album, those guys have been friends of mine for a while. And, uh, and, uh, it was their, their, their last album was the first five I ever gave that's coming out that I'm really excited about. And then, uh, uh, there's, uh, just the, uh, as always the bands I talk about on my metal monthly, um, there's a really cool one, uh, called Cauldron Black Ram, uh, coming up this month. It's like, a that, that, that just a really cool band that I hadn't heard before great album cover like super cool album everything sounds it's like all the whole thing is like kind of like primal warfare themed and it just really works everything works together and it's just one of those kind of nice complete packages and that's definitely one of the ones i'm most excited for and then for june i'll talk about it in metal monthly check it out on tv I would definitely inform everyone about that as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of those things where people are like, what albums are you excited about? And I'm like, well, I have a show where I talk about this, so no spoilers. <laughs> also, like, one other thing else I want to ask about, actually, is this. Um, have you, Actually, have do you watch any actually any metal YouTubers online, actually? Do you watch any metal YouTubers who have um, anything? Uh, well, uh, one of the what I, I ended up watching a lot of uh, Nick Nocturnal's videos after uh, after he was on Shredders of Metal, and I and I kind of really enjoy uh, the content he makes. Um, but then I it's it's weird because I do so much metal that when I'm on YouTube, it's like almost like the exact opposite of metal is what I watch. <laughs> like the music stuff I watch is like that Davey Five Hundred Four guy on bass because he's just like really good at bass, but then is just like silly and totally outside of the 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 realm of what i do it's it's uh it's weird if you look at my youtube suggested suggested feed it's just like some cooking tips like some funny things and then if it is metal content it's just like full album strange black metal band (laughs) (laughs) that's great um well, also, like, actually, one other, one fun thing that actually me and a couple of my friends have been doing lately, actually, we've been um doing on Saturdays now, like, a, like, whole group chat actually talking about, like, 
metal bands and new suggestions for like upcoming albums, things that are going on our channel and all that. It's it's been a lot of fun actually. Yeah, I mean that's I mean that's I think one of kind of the universal things that every metalhead is is looking for is like if you if you're if you're listening to a lot of other types of music, you know, you're just listen you just like that music and that's kind of where it ends. But with metal, it's like you want people to talk about it <laughs> you know like uh, you're like i want like a bunch of people that i can just get really excited and send them an album and go like oh my god this this and this 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 and this uh and want them to get excited back you know people people like music but not the way metalheads do where it's like we find something we like and then we must push it on every single human being we encounter We're like have you heard this yet have you heard this yet have you heard this have you heard this yet it's on my shirt and i'm also holding it and i'm also listening to it and i want to talk to you about it for 10 minutes i can't even tell you how many times i tell one of my friends about new albums and bands i'm like dude you gotta listen to this this is sick right it's the it entire basis for some of my friendships is just i if if there if there's no new albums i don't know what we talk about <laughs> Yeah, cause I mostly go to stuff that's like old, like some of the old like uh, '90s death metal that probably I never heard of, but then I just get into it very quickly. Yeah, I mean, I you know, DK posted a photo the other day. I was I I, I had to drop some stuff off because he he you know we all kind of do everyone at Banger kind of wears many different hats and kind of we all help out and do different things here and there. Uh, and so DK is sending out all the merch while we're. Well, we're all closed, so I had to run some merch over to him from the office, and uh, and I so I run the merch over to him. But we're doing proper social distancing, so I'm just like in the car, and he's like across the street. And I'm like, "Have you heard the new Paradise Lost yet?" I'm just reviewing it. And he's like, "No." I'm like, "All right." I'm just cranking in the car, just sitting there like, it's "Pretty cool, right?" <laughs> Oh, that's great! Uh, I gotta say, you have such a like fantastic sense of humor. Actually, I it's I love it. <laughs> oh, thanks, man. Yeah, like I said, you know, it's just it's just kind of the thing where it just I just don't take anything really seriously, and I just try and you know be not serious and happy. I just try and balance those two things as much as I can because well, it tends to make other people not take things seriously and be happy. Well, of course, I do that too. You should, Back in my day, like I was like that one kid in the class that would always like let like, make everyone laugh. Like I just like to be silly and joke around. A lot yeah, right. I mean, you know, there's something very, there's something very nice about making people laugh because you're like, oh, I'm just, I'm making, I'm very directly making other people happy, and I can tell. You know, it's like an yeah. immediate reaction, and it just feels good for you and for them. And you're like, this is such a nice experience. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, basically, I'm just randomly asking this, but like, what do you mostly do during your free time? Like, when you're not doing reviews, like, what is it like? Just doing like, like, what do you do basically during your free time? Almost all my hobbies are like fairly nerdy. Um, I play a lot of video games. You know, I do that on on Twitch and everything. And then I like models. I paint Warhammer. I build Gundams. I, <laughs> I, uh, you know, I, uh, I, I. You know, I do some outdoor activities. I like to, to ride bikes, BMX, skateboard, anything like that. But a lot of what I do is, you know, hey, oh, get, oh one sec. I should go right ahead. <laughs> I mean, I mean, right beside, right beside is me priming and and starting to paint. This is a bunch of pieces of a Warhammer, of two Warhammer miniatures, right? <laughs> <laughs> awesome. That's uh, you know, that's that's one of the. Models is is a really I find it really it's very meditative and relaxing. You kind of just sit there and you get this nice example of progress. You you know you feel accomplished when it's done and you know, it's nice. Awesome! It's always good to have something to do. Actually, that's something yeah. I, I, for me. I can't even tell you. I listen to like I can't even tell you how many days I listen to like a band each day. That's like something yeah. I do. Like I oh work. yeah, and then the nice thing about that is you can put on a record and then just paint and listen to the record. And, you know. <laughs> Metal goes really well with uh, with you know big robots and uh, and and monsters. <laughs> that's that's a really awesome. Um, uh, let me think what else. Oh, oh, by the way, since you were saying about Gundam, actually, do you actually watch any actually anime? Yeah, yeah, I watch a, a ton of anime. Me and my wife both like anime, so it's like a nice thing we can do together. Um, and uh, and yeah, there's like just uh, one we really like together is that. Uh, uh, Food Wars, Shokugeki no Soma, where it's like Iron Chef, but anime. <laughs> yeah. That's that's one we really liked. Um, uh, and uh, 
man, what else do we watch together? Um, uh, there's a show Grappler Backy on uh, on on Netflix where there's just these crazy fights that just uh, just ridiculous oh, yeah. like martial arts fights between two guys uh for every episode and then yeah i like uh i like a bunch of gundam stuff my favorite one recently being the iron blood and or I- eh, iron blooded orphan series i really like <laughs> awesome uh, actually one of my friends showed me actually that show baki actually and i gotta say it's let's just say like the, my reaction to it was like this is this is not real this is like <laughs> this is too crazy yeah right <laughs> Um, and the theme, it's got a really good theme song too oh, yeah. it's like kind of a metal theme song it's like, <laughs> <laughs> like uh, have you ever watched full metal alchemist yeah 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 we watch it again that's one me and my wife like we watch that together <laughs> awesome that's actually one of the shows that me and my one of my friends talk about so much because we love yeah the, the plot and everything of it <laughs> yeah that's such a i mean it, it's such a cool show because you know one of the i mean it's one of the things anime does really well where it's like you know it's uh, a show where it's like, oh, we tried to bring back our dead mom and we made a monster, and then I, and then and now we're amputees. But then, like the next scene is like some stupid joke about how he's short. <laughs> it's like it's just the balance of like being incredibly serious, but then being able to be you know funny as well really appeals to me as someone reviewing like you know sad times black metal bands and then making a bunch of jokes. <laughs> oh, actually, oh, also, I want to ask: Have you ever actually been to Norway? Uh, I've been, yeah, I have been to Norway actually. Um, when I lived in Europe, I spent some time in Norway. Um, I met a couple people that were on vacation in Paris, and they were like, "Oh, you should come out and stay with us." And I was like, "Okay, sure." Uh, figuring they're just like, "Oh, you know, just being friendly." But then they, you know, Norwegians, I guess, a lot like Canadians, were like, "You should come out and stay with us." <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, okay, yeah, sure, I guess I'll come out." They're like, "When do you want to come out?" And I was like, "Oh, you guys are really serious about that." And then I went out, and we had a great time. I. Uh, I got to see both like small Norway and like Oslo. So they were in this town called Stavanger, which is where uh, Kvelar Tech is from, if you know that band. Um, so I went out and stayed with them for a bit. Um, and then uh, it was funny. We were climbing a mountain as like there was this mountain near their town. They were like, everybody climbs the mountain. It's a tourist attraction. We should go. And I was like, okay, cool. Let's go climb this mountain. And we climbed the mountain. And it was really fun. It was very Norwegian experience. We got naked and swam in a little pond in the middle of the mountains and stuff. It was, you know, a really nice experience. And then we ran into the guitar player from Kvelar Tech, uh, Magic, who was a friend of theirs. Um, and he was like, oh, this is our friend Blaine. He's going to Oslo in a couple of days. He's like, oh, bummer. I'm just going on tour. I won't be in Oslo. And I was like, oh, that sucks. He's like, where are you staying? I'm like, oh, I'm still figuring that out. He's like, oh, just stay in my apartment. He just gave me the keys on top of the mountain. <laughs> I was like, uh, you just met me. They're like, yeah, I'm your friend with Donna and Trina. You're fine. I was like, okay. And then I went and stayed in his apartment. And, you know, it was everyone in Norway was just like the nicest, friendliest person. And it was a beautiful, clean country. I got a cool tattoo of of, uh, of a Satan uh, by a guy there. It was the perfect Norway experience. That is amazing, actually. By next year, actually, I plan to go to Norway and attend the Infernal Festival. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, just a great country, great people. It was a super fun time. And it was weird. Like, you'd walk. It, like, does feel very metal there, though. Because, like, when I first got this, so I took a train into this town called Stavanger. I get off the train. There's a 7-Eleven in the, uh, in the uh, like, the train station. I go into the 7-Eleven. The 7-Eleven employee is just a dude with a neck tattoo. <laughs> like, oh, shit. <laughs> it's 7-Eleven employees have sick neck tats here? Cool. And then I found this candy that nobody likes uh, outside of Scandinavian countries. Everybody thinks it's disgusting. Uh, here, uh, uh, hold on a second. It's yeah. a video. It's a video. You know, it's fun to have props. <laughs> I heard of this on uh, on eBay from Sweden. Uh, it's all in Swedish. <laughs> and what it is is it's it's very it's the most metal candy possible because it's not it's barely candy. Um, so it's these skull and crossbones that are black, uh, but it's black licorice, and that's not sugar on it. That's salt. <laughs> Oh so it's God. like not candy <laughs> <laughs> and this this tub was full there's like this many left now that is awesome how does it actually like, taste damn it tastes like 
black licorice covered in fucking salt. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> tastes like black licorice covered in salt, 100%. That's exactly what it tastes like. It tastes like exactly what you think it tastes like. Oh, that must be incredible. Uh, did you ever, like, give it to anyone else that you actually saw any? But, like, you, you got to try this. This is actually Yeah, yeah, crazy. yeah. I give it to people all the time, and they're always like, this is disgusting. You're wrong. <laughs> like, oh, you're stupid. <laughs> um, uh, also, like, have you actually, when he went to uh, Oslo, actually, did he ever go to that, um, did you ever go to the uh, Helvetia Record Store? Yeah, of course, of course. You gotta go. It's it's such a cool experience. We're like, ah, <laughs> but it's this like tiny record store, so it's so weird being that excited. So we're like, ah, <laughs> we did it, yeah. <laughs> Like uh, I, I, that's actually some. That's like my number one spot I want to go to when I go there. Yeah, yeah. Cool. There's the there's a couple of things. There's that, and then there's those uh, there's those there's these three swords. There's these big oh, yeah. swords yeah. that are in the ground in like rural Norway where you gotta go. You gotta go to these swords. It's like a Viking monument. It's like a monument for Vikings, and you just get to take a picture in front of like you can like like this in front of these three giant like they're like you know like six story high swords and you're like okay sick <laughs> this picture's metal as hell <laughs> <laughs> nice uh did they ever go to the basement actually where like the the inner black circle was in yeah yeah they that's like that's like the tourist attraction of the place you know it feels like you're going to like a like a like a fun house at a fair you're like oh <laughs> let's go <laughs> Like, did he ever, yeah, like, haunted house, yeah. <laughs> did he ever purchase anything from there? Like, any, like, rare items from Helvetia? Uh, I can't, I can't, I got a, I just bought a record, just, I bought a black metal record just because, I can't remember what it was, but I was like, I'm gonna get, I just have to get a black metal record I'm here, and I just looked through and I found some. Oh, actually, I were here, let's, I'll show you to you. <laughs> sure, go right ahead. bought this record it's a band black death and then it turns out that maybe they're nazis so <laughs> whoops <laughs> i was like damn this looks cool and then i put it on and i was like oh this sounds really cool <laughs> and i was like listening to it for a while and then i was like i wonder if they have any other records and i looked at some of the other records and i was like uh oh <laughs> what did i buy <laughs> well uh, let me think what else i was gonna say like um Actually, yeah, actually, I, I've been telling some people, actually, I've been asking some people this question, actually. Uh, have you actually seen the movie uh, Lords of Chaos? Um, I, you know what? I kept meaning to watch it, and then I kept forgetting, and then I just never did. <laughs> and, then I, and for a while, I was like, uh, I don't want I was like, I, I was like, oh, I'm going to watch it. And then I kept forgetting to, and I didn't watch it. And then <laughs> everybody was talking about it, and then... I was just pretending I watched it so that I wouldn't have to because it started to feel like a chore. And I was like, I don't want to fucking do my homework. And then people were like, hey, have you watched it? I was like, yeah, it's weird. And they were like, yeah, it is weird. And I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> Next topic. <laughs> so I just did. I got, I keep, I know I have to, but like I said, it feels like homework at this point. <laughs> Like, uh, I, I gotta say, I, I've seen it like a few times because I watched it with a couple of my other friends actually. But all I yeah. want to say is one thing. When you're watching the movie, don't believe everything that's that's going on. Sometimes. Oh yeah, yeah, like you gotta be. I like, mean, it's a movie. Yeah. Oh yeah, they gotta they they jazz it up. <laughs> oh yeah, so no, that's a that's a good thing to remember when you're watching any movie. They're jazzing it up. Oh yeah, of course. Like it, I was when I first watched it, I was like, oh, they're gonna hype this up no matter what. It's a Hollywood film. I'm expecting yeah. it to do like that. Well, Hollywood, it's <laughs> not quite Hollywood. It's a little, it was a, you know, it was still a little, it is an indie film. We'll get it the credit it deserves. It wasn't, you know. Oh, yeah, like, for me, I gave it a decent rating. I actually thought it was fun. It was a fun watch, and I actually... Yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I've mostly heard good things, and the people I've heard bad things from are people whose opinions are generally wrong <laughs> people who are, whose opinions are just a little too like yeah it's a bit much man <laughs> take it down a notch yeah. uh so yeah like i said i kept meaning to but then it got to the point where i was like do i have to watch this no nope, i'm not gonna watch it then <laughs> you can, but most of you i think the best thing to do if you, you know if you if you want to and not watch the movie just watch like a small little like review of something and you just yeah, see, yeah. Like, someone's just talking about and then you can be like okay i heard it now i now it's basically seeing the movie yeah, yeah. <laughs> also, like, um, actually, have you ever seen the movie Heavy Trip? Yeah, yeah, Heavy Trip is very cool. I thought that they, that was like a they they again. It's that thing where there's like a certain you have to nail the humor, otherwise it's like oh, this is uncomfortable. Uh, and I thought they did a really good job with it. 
Oh yeah, me too. Actually, I, I actually found that movie just by uh, just scrolling through like my TV once. Actually, I, oh really? Weird. <laughs> I was never expecting. I was just like movies on demand. And all of a sudden, I was like heavy trip, and I was like, "What's that?" Actually, because the guy was wearing corpse paint, and I was like, "Okay, what is this about?" Actually, <laughs> oh damn! I gotta get that. I gotta get that movie package. That's a good channel. <laughs> <laughs> so then I was reading, and I was like, "Okay, this is my new movie. I need to yeah. watch this." <laughs> That's basically how I found about it, actually. And um, also, like, um, one other thing I want to ask is this, actually. Uh, um, when it comes to, like, um, actually, do you actually, not that, actually. Do, when you, um, sorry, I'm just trying to think of something. Um, what I was going to say, course. what I was going to say was, like, um, is there any, actually, any other genres of music you listen to besides just metal? Like, just to mix it up a bit? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I listen to everything. Um, the, I, I'm, I'm one of those people I don't think, you know, people would be like, oh, yeah, I listen to everything, but this, that sucks. Um, you got to listen to everything. And the thing, especially from all the, you know, all the people I've interviewed, all the bands I've hung out with, all the friends I have that work in music, uh, everyone, if, if, if you don't listen to every type of music, the person who your favorite, the, the person, your favorite artist in the world listens to music you don't listen to. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that everybody that you respect in music listens to whatever's good. It just needs to be good. It doesn't matter what genre it is. So I'll listen to, you know, everything, you know, it, whatever is good. I listen to, you know, punk and hardcore is close. I listen to a bunch of that, but then, you know, uh, anything there was, I, I did a non metal suggestion <laughs> stream on, on Twitch where I was like, we're not allowed to listen to metal today. Everybody has to bring, some non-metal uh, music to the thing. So there was like, you know, some like dark wave and ambient some guys suggested. There was this, uh, there's this Neon City Records, which makes like anime inspired kind of music, <laughs> like based on shows and stuff. And it's like kind of like dancey almost. And I was like, oh, this is great. And I bought their discography on Bandcamp. Um, and then, you know, uh, there's when i'm when i'm doing stand up shows a lot of times there's a show i run on saturdays which is like late at night um and uh and the crowd's a little drunk and i play hip hop music for that cuz it's such a good way to get crowds excited and get everybody pumped up and uh, you know just anything i mean i i was i was driving back from burlington today and i was listening to genesis you know like you got to you got to listen to everything no oh, yeah of course like uh for me, I'm actually like um, I'm really into like also not just metal. I'm also also into like um, symphonic music, like you know, like orchestral. Actually, I find yeah. that to be really. It's not really like well, we all know it's not metal, but it has like that feeling of it sometimes with the epic. Oh yeah, totally. I mean, like you know, there's there's a there's a spirit to metal that I think can be conveyed in any sort of genre that you know you can get like some like damn this is a heavy ass symphony man they're, they're going crazy on those strings you know yeah totally. <laughs> Uh, so actually, uh, since uh, you like anime and stuff, do you actually play JRPG games, like any role-playing yeah. game? Yeah. Oh, did you play uh, Kingdom Hearts? Uh, Kingdom Hearts I didn't play as much, because that's not like the quite the kind of stuff that I play. Um, uh, I tend to like more like uh, like Final Fantasy Tactics kind oh, of stuff. Oh, okay, I see. Like, 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 I like, you know, some like, uh, you know, very... Uh, uh, you know, you can tinker around with stats and change job classes and really go nuts there's this cool one i'm playing right now which is uh it's like an indie game i, I don't think it wasn't made by a japanese developer i don't believe but it's called fell seal um and it's like uh it's like they basically just made like a final fantasy tactics worship kind of thing it's like everything is basically taken from final fantasy tactics but they did kind of cool interesting unique things with it so it's very like it's that thing you know it's like it's the video game equivalent of like the you know the, the old school death metal revival, <laughs> right? It's like a, like a band like uh, Ultra Tom, um, you know, uh, or something. Um, the, the kind of video game equivalent of that. And it's really cool. And that's what I'm playing like right now. Cool. That's what I'm playing in my spare time. Oh, nice. Uh, like, did he play Final Fantasy XV? Uh, I didn't, I didn't play Final Fantasy 15. I haven't played a Final Fantasy in a while because they like got kind of away from like the, the turn-based combat that I liked. Uh, in Final Fantasy games, uh, I did play the Final Fantasy VII remake though. Ooh, 
How do you like that so far? I've been hearing so many good things from people. Uh, it's a really great game, and then the ending sucks. <laughs> but the battle system is really fun. They did a really cool thing. I think it's actually similar to Final Fantasy XV's battle system, so I might have to check that out because I do like the battle system a lot. <laughs> Game's great until the ending, and then you're like, oh, this ending's stupid. <laughs> Um, uh, actually, I do have actually a do I do actually have a game actually I think you might be interested in actually and um have you ever played um Near Automata? Sorry, what was it? It was called Near Automata. Oh yeah, 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 yes, yes. Oh yeah, you played it? Yeah. Oh, uh, how did you like that actually? Because I've been yeah. it's been going very good. I mean, I mean, I beat that game like two years ago with one of my friends, and uh, I always love telling people about it because it's such an interesting game. Yeah, it's a uh, you know I uh, I do. There's certain types of combat systems I like where I like anything kind of when it does get more. If it's an action game, I like it when it's a bit more technical. And I found it had that technical atmosphere to it that I really like. I'm a really big like Dark Souls fan and stuff. So anytime it's like an action RPG, I like to be able to like get super. Yeah, again, you know, it's just that being able to get like super into it, like too into it, is is kind of what I look for in a game. Awesome. <laughs> Did you know that actually that there was a game before that one? Uh, no. Which one? Uh, it's just called Near. Oh, no. I didn't. Uh, actually, if you played that one, actually, they're, they're making a remake of it, actually, for PS4. Oh, cool. So, but if you play that, and actually, you'll understand why everything happened in the one you played. Oh, cool. Okay, cool. So I'll it's like, check that out. So, like, that's something that also, like, you should actually do. If, if you want to go more deeper into the lore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, I love, you know, like, getting really oh, into yeah. something. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything. I don't want to spoil anything for you because I want you to know <laughs> yeah. how it is. So that's something, actually. And um, uh, Let me think what else, actually. So, yeah, actually, that's something I also wanted to ask you about. And actually, um, also, like, um, are you into horror movies? Yeah, yeah. I, I tend to like uh, more, like, like 80s kind of B-horror movies are definitely my favorite. That's the kind of thing I watch the most. But I'll watch kind of anything in the horror genre. Oh, nice. Like, um... For me, it's more of Saw and Texas Chainsaw. Those are like my two favorite off franchises. Okay, yeah, yeah. For me, it's like I like when you know it's like neon green goo squirting, and it's funny, and it's uh, yeah, that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Now, do you ever, do you ever watch uh, Dead Alive? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, what do you think of that movie? Actually, overall, I like. I love telling, asking people if they've seen it or what they think of it. Yeah, I mean, again, that's one of those movies where it's like kind of what that's like more what I'm looking for, where it's like, uh, you know, that just like weird and funny and kind of, you know, gross and cool. Um, anything like that is really what uh, what kind of I really like about horror is when there's that element where you're like, well, this is totally ridiculous. And I think that it had that like completely ridiculous element to it that I really love. There's a uh, my background on my computer is this uh, this this great Japanese horror movie called Houseu and it's like uh, it's like this th- these these girls go to like visit this girl's aunt but her aunt like died and now her spirit just like possesses the house but it's like psychedelic and crazy and weird and blood shooting out of the walls and stuff like that and uh, that's probably my favorite horror movie ever um, so that yeah anything where it's like you look at it and you're like, man, did, were they on acid when they were making this whole movie? <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that sounds like really good, actually. Like, one of my friends has been suggesting, like, Japanese horror for a while, but yeah. I never got down to it, actually. Yeah, it's from the 70s. It's, like, totally makes no sense. It's, like, very strange. There's all kinds of weird scenes that, like, don't make sense. And you're like, why was that in there? And <laughs> it's just great. It's just weird things. Uh there's like there's like a scene where I can like uh, just to give you an example of something so minor but just so strange is like a car pulls up with a character in it and they get out and they're looking around and there's like a painted background of like a forest behind them and you're like okay that's I guess they didn't use a forest in this scene and it's just like a cheap background and then it pans back and the painted background of the forest is in front of a forest <laughs> and you're just like what. <laughs> <laughs> and then that's never addressed or explained or there's any reason for that it was just like this looks cool and so does this and you're like, what the <laughs> oh man i gotta check that out actually it sounds like one of those movies i gotta live watch yeah yeah it's it's impossible to explain the movie because <laughs> even it's impossible to it feels impossible to see the movie because you're like that couldn't be possibly what i'm seeing <laughs> 
Uh, also, like, I, oh, actually, this, this is a genre, actually, this is a genre of metal, actually, I wonder, I always ask everyone about, because I, I know it's considered very underground, because not many people, like, some people heard about it, but some people never really, like, got deep into it. Um, what do you think of uh, slam death metal? Slam is, like, that's, there's, there's a weird register of, like, death metal vocals, where once they get too low, it's not really, like, my thing, and so slam kind of falls outside of what I generally listen to, like to certain brutal stuff and slam is kind of like, not really my, I feel like it's like part of, it's almost like I'm like a, like a, like a, like a skinny ghoul looking guy. So I like skinny ghoul looking guy vocals. You know what I mean? Where it's like, where it's like a big guy, you like kind of the big low guy vocals. It's like, we kind of naturally are just all narcissists and we like the things that we feel like we are. Oh yeah, because like um, wait, one if he, I, there is this one uh, slam like I, I think the slam actually, but I think they're like brutal death metal. I, I think the the band's name is called uh repugnant, like repugnation or repugnant actually, yeah. like that. And I got I, I if you listen to that, that is literally the lowest vocals I think I've ever heard <laughs> actually for a for a band. I'm like, this it literally sounds like he's like gargling, but it's like yeah, really, right. but it's like really good. But I was like, oh, this is low. <laughs> Like so, if you ever get a chance, actually, you should check that out. Actually, because yeah. it's something that you'll probably like l- listen to and be like, "Wow, what is this?" Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I perpetually try. I'm always, I'm always open to things. I'm like, I'll check it out, and then, you know, I'm not someone that's like, "Oh, I don't like this, so it's bad." It's just like, well, this is for someone else. <laughs> <laughs> they made this for not me, and that's okay. <laughs> oh, so uh, what's your opinion on actually? Like, I I see. I know you like that band. Like, uh, oh yeah, I love that band too as well. None, actually, yeah. as well. Um, what do you think about actually? Um, like, what what is your opinion on DSBM, like depressive suicidal black metal? Uh, well, first of all, my opinion is that everybody says it wrong, and it should be suicidal depressive black metal because I think oh, it sounds better. Okay. <laughs> I think the words sound better <laughs> together because the like the L and D are close sounds in your mouth so it's easier to say and then v and s are far away so it's uncomfortable to say um but that's getting uh really uh nerdy um uh that was yeah that's the that's was my introduction to black metal um that was kind of the first black metal i started listening to where i i really just enjoy super like as washed out production as physically possible um and uh anything kind of in that atmosphere suicidal depressive i'm gonna say it like that you're allowed you're welcome to say it how you want to say it i'm gonna say it how i want to say it um uh that kind of yeah just that super washed out production um uh, hey i don't even need to get up this time because it was in the background of the thing i filmed where uh one of the first one of the first uh bands like that i found is this band vidard let's see that's their you know logo oh everything's backwards because it's a webcam. <laughs> <laughs> um uh is like just that's my favorite black metal band it's like one guy and of course it's one guy out of germany they just made some records and is weird um and didn't perform live and you don't know anything about him uh and it's just like the perfect sound to me um and that's like that was my that's my favorite black metal um it's it's i two ends of the spectrum it's either i want something to sound like that or i just want some like total like kind of you know, first wave of black metal, almost like black and speed, just somebody going crazy and having like, you know, beer party black metal. <laughs> oh yeah, because like um, for me actually, like I I basically found um that John uh, actually I want how do you say it actually in your way I like to I want suicidal actually... depressive black metal, not right. depressive suicidal. Right, I switched su- them around. <laughs> All right, suicidal depressive black metal. All right, uh, actually, I, first time I actually found that actually was I I think it was like um. I think I just randomly just typed in like black metal and then like this one band I'm trying to remember. I know what the logo looks like, but they're like a, a black metal band from like um, Iraq actually. And the first moment I heard it actually, I was like, this is, it was like something so different out of like anything like from Mayhem or Burzum or Dark Throne. And I was yeah. like, I was really hooked into it very quickly. So I, I also wanted to know if other people actually also enjoyed this as well. So um, that's basically how I found it. Yeah, I mean, like I said, you know, it's that thing I was talking about earlier where I just found a, some blog spots and I didn't even really realize it was like, I just thought that's what 
most black metal sounded like. I thought I was like, oh, this is the main genre. This is this is what the genre sounds like. <laughs> that, I was like, this, this is the main way. This, this is the this is what most of it sounds like. Uh, not realizing that that was like the, the bargain basement <laughs> demos for uh, demos for MySpace uh, uh, genre of black metal. But yeah, that was that 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 super washed air production where it's almost like you're struggling to hear it, and it just. It just sounds so perfect with everything to me. Oh, nice. Also, actually, one of my other friends, actually, who I'm very close with, actually, like, I mean, I've, I've, I've been friends with him for, like, a whole year so far right now, and we got to know each other very well, and we became very close. Uh, he makes um, one of his own black metal bands, actually, called uh, Jakir, and uh, yeah. he's been, he made, like, two, like three albums, one, a demo, a uh, second one called The Only Peace You Know Is In The Grave, and the third one is... Um, the precipice of dark of death and decay. Uh, they're actually they can, they were really like some of the best black metal I think I've heard ever from him actually. And I, oh, cool. And I gotta say, if you ever get a chance, you should check it out. It's some, yeah, it's, totally. it's, some, it's something that I think you would really enjoy. Oh, nice. Yeah, I mean that's uh, the, the the cool thing about black metal versus like any other genre of metal is that it does seem like it's like the easiest for one guy to make for whatever reason <laughs> and to make like it sound good it's like the most punk of the metals where you're like total diy man i recorded this at home in a basement on a four track i found the trash and you know i uh, i i had to use a dry i had to program the drums but you know it's recorded so poorly you can't tell uh cool here's my album <laughs> it's a photo of me on the cover but you can't see what my face looks like I'm like nice dude cool <laughs> awesome uh, also, like, what did, I, I want to also like ask this too. Actually, um, this is something I just I just came up up uh, I came with, up with on the spot, and I was gonna ask, um, um, what was like the first thing you actually ever did for Banger? Actually, like, what was like the very first when you first like got into the team? What was like the first thing you did? Um, so like I said, the like very first thing I did was I uh, I did that Death Doom uh, episode of Lockhorns, and that was like as a guest, and then they it went really well and there was really good feedback and they were like, Hey, we have to film another episode of Lockhorns next week. Do you want to come back next week and do a like early death metal episode? <laughs> and I was like, Oh, uh, just sure. And they're like, okay, come back in. <laughs> and I was like, okay. Um, and then, uh, after that they were like, okay, that went really well. Uh, do you want to review an album next week? And I was like, what? They're like, we you know, uh, if you, we just, we'll try out, we'll see how you review an album and then we'll go from there. And I was like, okay. Um, I think it was Bison, uh, which is like a Canadian kind of like sludgy, doomy band uh, uh, out of BC. Um, uh, I reviewed that, and then that went really well. And they were like, okay, do you want to just do, do this <laughs> regularly? And I was like, I just kind of like fell backwards into a job I didn't realize I was applying for. I was like, oh, I'd love to come out and talk about something. Maybe it can help me in com promote my comedy career. <laughs> and then it was like, now that's like – that's the career, and I'm like, oh, I hope my comedy career can promote my bank. <laughs> my... That's an awesome story. I love that. That's great. Yeah, you know, it's just, uh, Banger's very super organic. It's not like you apply for a job. It's like you accidentally came in to do a thing. You know, the Dylan, the uh, one of the, the kind of newest reviewer uh, that covers our prog section that we had like a big hole where everybody was like you want to cover this progressive metal and we were like no <laughs> <laughs> Dylan was like dude that's my favorite genre and we we're like oh sorry uh he was like a, he was an intern he was like at ryerson in film school and he was like oh you know i just need to do an internship and i was like okay and he was just like again you know just someone that was in there and he was really passionate i was like oh it seems like you're really excited and you really like this and you bring something different you know that that no one else on the team brings uh why don't we try you out and we tried him out and you know again there's like a certain there's like certain personalities that really go well with certain genres and like for the progressive he just has like the perfect personality you know it goes so well with the the people that want to, the bands he's talking about that's the guy they want to hear talk about those bands so you know it's just kind of a nice again just like one of those happy kismet happy coincidence kind of things <laughs> awesome also actually I, I, before like i end this actually i was gonna actually, actually tell ask you um actually do you want to see some cool actually Sure. Yeah. All right. Uh, check out what I with this mortician T-shirt. Oh yeah, I saw you post this with the uh, the uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
how do you, how do you like that? I don't, I think it was so creative of what the yeah doing yeah no it's very it's it's a it's such a nice little touch it's so subtle but it's great. But I saw that I was like oh my god I gotta get it I love mortician yeah. I just gotta just be like hey you know what during this time this sounds like a fun thing to wear and and just it yeah right. as well. Yeah, I just I I just it's not a metal shirt, but I just bought a a a, a shirt because I live in Toronto, and you know we won uh, the the Toronto Raptors won the uh, the the NBA championship last year, and then this year it's not happening. <laughs> so it's a it's a it's a shirt that says. Uh, you know, Raptors NBA, it's like a Raptors NBA championship shirt, but it says, uh, uh, it's, it says till at least 2021. <laughs> Cause it's like, well, we're still champions. No one took it away from us. We're still the champions. We get to have it for another year because who, who else is the champions if it's not us? Hmm? Nobody. That's who. <laughs> Uh, so like um w- w- one thing before I actually um you know wrap it up actually like you know and finish um one other thing I wanted to ask you was like um like is there like um any like um I'm just asking you if you if you know me is there any like new upcoming things that are coming soon? Like I said, I can't I can't tell you about the things I'm really excited about. It's, I don't say Bell Witch, the new Bell Witch record, very exciting. Um, the Cauldron Black Ram uh is is from metal monthly that i'm really really excited about um and uh and then what i'm really excited about is uh also is uh hey tuesday june 2nd you can watch metal monthly where i talk about the five records coming out in june that i'm really excited about. <laughs> oh, <of course. laughs> no i don't want you to spoil anything because <laughs> i hate spoilers i'm crazy about spoilers that's the thing i hate the most when somebody says, says something to me and, I'm, and then they ruin it i'm like why why did you I'm know? so crazy about spoilers. I don't watch trailers for movies. I want to see. Oh really? Oh, that's actually. Something I don't I listen to singles for albums. I'm excited about. I like. I. I'm. I put on. I put on a black hood and just just power through until it comes out. <laughs> the one thing I hate is leaks. Like when they leak it out early. No, oh, I know, so, right? Yeah. It's like why? Why do you do that? <laughs> the first. The first thing I ever did it for was I was like really excited about. Uh, 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 Dark Knight, and I was like, okay, I'm just not gonna watch any trailers. Uh, and then uh, I didn't see, I did, I totally ignored every uh, every trailer, every article, anything about it, any casting notes or anything. And then it came out, and I was like, wow, this is a really good movie. And then it ended, and I was like, that was a great ending. And then it wasn't over, and I was like, holy shit, Two Face is in this movie? And everybody was like. <laughs> You didn't know Two Face was in the movie. I was like, I didn't look at a single thing. This is blowing my mind. <laughs> That's great. And I'm like, damn, I got to have the best experience out of anyone watching that movie because everybody was like, oh boy, I'm excited for Two Face, and I was like, oh, I'm excited for this movie. <gasps> Holy Two Face! <laughs> That's great. <laughs> like, and now like, that is a small idea. I never thought about like actually not watching the trailer for it. Actually, I didn't. Think, I've never thought of yeah. that. You know, if I'm if I'm curious about a movie, if there's something I don't know that I want to see, I'll, I'll I'll watch the trailer. But like, I you know, I'm especially with like the superhero movies, it's like I'm gonna go see Infinity War. Why am I gonna watch the trailer? At the very least, every trailer ruins the best joke in the movie because you hear the joke in the trailer and then it happens in the movie and you're like, oh, I heard that six times already. <laughs> yeah. And as a comedian, I'm like, no, I want the best joke in the way it was supposed to be delivered in the appropriate context. So one guy in that writer's room was like, I'm a comedian, this is all I can contribute, put in one joke, <laughs> and then it gets ruined in the trailer. He's like, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, aren't you happy your joke is uh, being used to advertise the movie? And you're like, no, because it's not in the originally intended context, so it's not as funny. <laughs> and also the worst thing is sometimes they cut it out in the actual film. Like they, No, I know. Because <laughs> they, they have to edit it. And it's like, yeah. was that just like the only punchline they did to sell it? Oh yeah! Oh, don't, right? don't even worry. I, not not my jokes. I, I as a human being have been cut out of things. I've been in where you're like, I'm excited to be in this, and then you're like, cool. Never mind. <laughs> I wasn't in it. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> uh, actually, do you have like any like on YouTube or anything? Do you have like any like recordings of like your comedy shows? Oh, this is this is a this is a this is a nice little COVID wrap up story. Uh, uh, so I I had I'm like I said I don't like homework, uh, <laughs> and uh, recording stand up always felt like homework. Uh, uh, 
and I was like, I was putting it off, and I was like, okay, I got to start recording. And so me and my friends uh, were like, okay, let's have a show. Let's do a monthly show in Toronto where we record all the sets, and the whole idea is it's a show. You come out, we record the sets, and that's the whole vibe for the show. Um, we're going to do it. It's going to be great. We got all this video equipment. Sweet. I can edit. You can do this. You can do this. Sweet. It's going to be awesome. And then we'll always, every month, we'll be able to put up a new stand-up video. It's going to be sick. The first show was uh, March 24th. It did not <laughs> It did not happen because there was a quarantine. <laughs> uh, so everybody's been like in quarantine being like, do you have any stand-up videos? And it's like, boy, if this quarantine happened a month later, would I have had all the video content you could possibly need? So uh, I'll have some video content for you when we're allowed to perform in front of audiences again. So I don't know, maybe in six months, maybe in two and a half years. <laughs> Very frustrating. I, I can understand. Like, I would love to see what you actually did, actually. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how it goes. Yeah, it's, it sucks because all the videos of me doing stand-up on YouTube are, like, four years old. And people are like, uh, this isn't great. And I'm like, yeah, it's four years old. Let's see whatever you're doing four years ago and how you feel about it, man. <laughs> my, oh, my old videos were bad, and I can definitely go back yeah. to them and say, right. like, oh, this is not good. Yeah, there's like a video for me from like seven years ago on YouTube, and I'm just like, that was like my first year doing stand-up comedy. This, I, God, I wish this was taken down. Holy fuck! <laughs> well, actually, you could you could contact YouTube to tell them to take it down. Video, yeah, so. please take it down. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, I think I'm just gonna end it off right here. Actually. All right, cool, man. Good talking to you. Oh, of course, it's a pleasure. Like, uh, I hope to continue to keep um, in contact with each other. Keep uh, talking. Yeah, man. You know, tick tag away. Send a message. Of course. I'm always here. Cool. Thank you, and I appreciate. No. I really appreciate you doing this. Actually, it, absolutely, it, it really means a lot to me. Thank you so much, Blaine. Hey, man, it was a lot of fun. I had a great time. <laughs> oh, of course. Um, anyway, I'll see you eventually. All right. Yeah. Talk to you later. All right. See, see you. Man. <laughs>